So Tulsi Das Ji Maharaj says, Guru Griha Gaye Padhan Raghurai. Bhagwan Ram went to Guru Vasish's ashram to study. Alpakal Vidya Sab Ai. Quickly, he learned everything. What did he need to learn? So he clarifies in the next chopai. Jaki Sahaja Shwas Shruti Chari Sohari Padhaya Kautuk Bhari. That Lord who manifests the Vedas by his breath. Nishwasitamasya Veda, the Vedas say. God breathes and the Vedas are manifest. That so hari pad, that God went to study. Yaha kautuk bhari. This is his kautuk. This is his leela. So what is leela? Leela is actually acting. When the sarva samarth is becoming asamarth, when the sarvagya is becoming alpagya, when the sarva shaktiman is becoming alpa shaktivan, that is the leela. So here this leela is now unfolding. However, Ram now, he reached the full blossoming of youth. And at that time, Vishwamitra Muni made his appearance. So Vishwamitra is a contemporary of Vasisht. He is a great authority in our Vedic heritage. Vasisht used to believe in Bhagya. And he would repeatedly tell people, you know, it is all Bhagya, it is all destiny. Sunu Bharat Bhavi Prabal. He is telling Bharat. Jehi Vidhi Likha Lilar Deva Danuja Naranag Muni Kona Meta Nihar. Look, Bharat. This is all written in destiny, the passing away of Dashrat, nobody can do anything. But Vishwamitra is on the other extreme. He believes in Purusharth. And by his Purusharth, he became from a Kshatriya to a Brahman in this lifetime itself. So there are big episodes of his conflict with Vasisht. When he was a king, he had taken his army out. Now they were resting somewhere close to Vasisht's ashram. They requested, can we get something? So Vasisht had the daughter of Kamadhenu Nandini, wish-fulfilling cow. So he fed the entire army. Vishwamitra was very impressed. He said, can you give that cow to us? Vasisht refused. So this was the trigger point of the enmity between Vishwamitra and Vasisht. That enmity grew tremendously. Each time Vishwamitra would do an attack on Vasisht, Vasisht would fend it off because Vasisht had spiritual power and Vishwamitra had material military power. So he would go off to perform austerities. He was a Rajarshi. And Vasisht was a Brahmarshi. After performing the austerities, he would come again to Vasisht. And Vasisht would address him as Rajarshi. So he would become disappointed. So finally in frustration, one night he went off. And he took a pharsa to kill Vasisht. And he went and hid behind Vasish's hut. So he tried to hear what's going on. I will go and kill them. So Vasish's wife Arundhati was asking him that who is the biggest ascetic tapasvi in present times? Vasish said the biggest tapasvi is Vishwamitra. But that anger of his brings him down. Otherwise, he's a great soul. Vishwamitra thought that in my absence, he has got no enmity towards me. He is praising me. His anger 
dissolved. He went inside. He threw the parasa at the feet of Vasisht and apologized. Maharaj, I had come to kill you, but seeing your nobleness, I am humbled. Now Vasisht addressed him as Brahmarshi. Now you have conquered anger. So that Vishwamitra became a complete spiritual personality. He used to perform yagyas with some rishis in the forest. And some Rakshasas, demons used to come and obstruct. So Vishwamitra said, I can kill them. But now, I am a Rishi. And it is not becoming to kill them. Let me go and get the help of Ram. So he arrived in Ayodhya. And when Dashrajji Maharaj, he saw that Vishwamitra Mahamuni has come, he was deeply delighted. He welcomed him with great respect, did his arati, made him sit on a high asan. And he asked the children also to come and do pranam. So they all did pranam and took the blessings of Vishwamitra. If a Mahamuni has come to the house without asking, what bigger blessing can there be? So Dashrajji said, Maharaj, is there any seva that I can do for you? It shall be my privilege to fulfill it. Vishwamitra said, I live in the forest and the yagyas that we do, the Rakshasas come to disturb. So I need the help of your two sons, Ram and Lakshman. You send them with me, they will kill these demons. Hearing that, Dashrat practically fell on the floor. Because for Dashrat, Ram is a youth, he is not God. He said, Maharaj, he is komal, he is soft, he has never faced the hardship of the forest. If you need the Rakshasas to be killed, ask for my help, I will go. How can you endanger my children like this? Vishwamitra said, I have given you the Agya and you are not willing to obey. Vasishchi immediately intervened. He said, Dashrat, this Agya of the Guru must always be followed. Do not disobey. He has got the spiritual power. Nothing is going to happen to Ram and Lakshman. So Dashrat immediately gave his consent. He asked Ram and Lakshman to take the blessings of the mothers. So Ram went to Kaushalya to take blessings before leaving. Kaushalya had been told by Shivji that this Baba will come and take away your son, but don't worry, he will get him married and bring him back. So Kaushalya is happy that something good is going to happen. Sumitra gave instructions that serve Ram and take good care. So receiving the blessings of Mother Sumitra, Ram and Lakshman came and took the blessings of Dashrat and finally Guru Vasisht. And it started off with Vishwamitra, with the Dhanush Baan in hand. So as they go in the forest, Vishwamitra is in confusion. Is Ram Brahma or is he an ordinary human? Maybe he is Brahma, but maybe he is not. If he is God, then how come I have reached him so easily? If he is God, then how come he is so casually walking along with me? No, 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 he cannot be God, but he must be God. You see, you all go and worship the Murti in the Mandir, right? You have no problem in accepting a Murti as God. Most people, by sanskars. 
Now, if the same murti came to your house and started taking a drink, you know, sharbat or something, and somebody said, ye bhagwan hai, you would have a hearty laugh, ye bhagwan hai, or nimbu pani pire hai. So similarly, Vishwamitra is confused. So Ram is antaryami, he knows the mind. He says, let me increase his confusion. So sometimes he's going and running and looking at the flowers and sometimes he's running after the butterflies. He's enjoying the scenery of the forest. Lakshman is thinking in his mind, what Leela is my Prabhu doing today? But when they entered the deep forest, Tadaka, the Rakshasi made her appearance. So she appeared in the sky and Vishwamitra immediately pointed, she is one of them. So Ram immediately took out his Dhanush barn and shot Tadaka and killed her. So when he killed Tadaka, Vishwamitra still did not get confirmation that he is God. Tadaka fell at his feet, at Ram's feet. And Ram gave her Sharan. So, at that time, Vishwamitra, he understood that he is Patit Pavan. So, he realized that, all right, then he is definitely God. So, he liberated Tadaka as Patit Pavan. And Vishwamitra, he offered Pranam. He said, I am so fortunate to have your darshan today, he started doing samarpan of the vidyas that he had.